Now, personally, personally, I really enjoyed the opening segment for Dynamite. Personally, I did. Chris Jericho's Thanksgiving celebration. Let's give thanks to Le Champion. To me, this was a lot of fun. In the fact that I got to see Virgil again. You know what? Throw me freaking burn here once in a while. I'm cool with that. What's in the box? It's his dad, former New York Ranger Ted Irvine. Let's come out there into the suburban Chicago crowd and crap all over the Blackhawks for a couple of minutes. Knowing that Chicago, as much as it's a Bears town, close behind that, it's a Blackhawks town. Get that cheap heel heat. Get people to hate Jericho. In and of itself, this was a lot of fun. Unlike most of the rest of this show. Because once you got past this opening segment, which I know a lot of the hardcore people didn't like, I know Melter didn't like, which if anything, if Melter doesn't like it, gives me even more reason to like it, which means they should do more of this stuff, not less of it, like he would probably want. He wants freaking Okada Omega six and a half giant matches that aren't going to draw shit here consistently in the United States, you stupid idiot! But... Instead, we get exactly the type of show that I would expect from this company and the clowns running this company. Like Best Friends versus Lucha Brothers. Now, to all these matches matter, folks. The matches don't matter if you don't have the other stuff. Stop being so simplistic yet selfish in your view on wrestling because it's exactly these types of fans that the people in wrestling are listening to now that are helping to kill wrestling. What is the purpose for these guys wrestling? Why should we care? What does it matter? It's about characters, storytelling. It is about emotional investment. All of those things that build up to the payoff that comes from the matches, and even then and of itself, who gives a crap about the offense and the comeback in the middle of the match, you retards? It's about the moments. And without these other things that build up to it, you've got nothing. you just flippy-flopping around for a few minutes to pop the nerves out of there, who, by the way, you didn't even sell out the venue again. And it's a perfectly reflected in the ratings for this week's show. Okay, when you key demo, who gives a crap? I mean, a lot more if they were doing well in that demo, if they're drawing 1.2 million viewers, not just over 600,000. Especially knowing wrestling historically and the trend of it not drawing as much money in terms of advertising revenue compared to other programming that you could put in that could draw a similar rating, even if it did a little less in that 18 to 49 demo. And we've got to get out of this mindset of just throwing out matches for the hell all of matches. Just because the people that live in their kind of isolated, hardcore wrestling bubble think this is cool and this is awesome in no way, shape, or form means that is a key to success. And it's not. Continue to do this crap, and your show won't be around that long. Women's tag match, same damn thing. Random match, why are these women wrestling? Why do we care? What's at stake? Who are they? What reason do we have to get emotionally invested? None, we have none of that. None of that. And even when you have something that people are emotionally invested in, Cody. Now, I can't stand the son of a bitch. I think he's the biggest heel they've got. Now they portray him as a baby face, which is all a lie. You know, that's all a lie. That's Illuminati reptilian crap right there. But nonetheless, I will say this that if the fans kind of care about him, then let's do things to make sure that they continue to care about him. And one way to not do that is to have some freaking jobber ass faction that nobody knows who the hell they are attacking at random on the damn show in the middle of the show in a featured segment. Who put together this show this week? It's just ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. 
It's like this arrogance of, well, you want to know who these guys are? Go to the internet. No, assholes. It's your job to tell us who the hell they are. And even when I saw some of the people that really follow wrestling even more intently than I do, we're talking about they didn't really understand or know who the hell these guys are. Then we've got a bigger issue there. It's a bigger issue than my eye twitch, and that's saying something. Why? Because Allie goes a couple weeks ago for getting attacked by Kong and getting her hair cut, and now she's getting revenge on Brandy. So like, like, how does this make any damn sense? I could have been something if MJF would have attacked War with Wardlow again. Or if MJF would have shown himself and been responsible for this attack. But none of that happened! You just made one of your most interesting acts look stupid. Why? For the hell all of it? I don't know. And even when you get matches that have some story and you have some consequence here, like Kenny Omega versus Pac, well, again, it's just like they drop the ball on the little things that could really set these things up to make these matches big deals. Like, when you look at this show, you know, this match feels like it should have been a bigger deal. This is a pay-per-view a rematch that's been a couple of months in the making, like all of that. And then it just kind of didn't happen. You know, and I look at this match again, and especially because you look at Pac, he feels like the perfect type of heel, mid-card type of champion to match having a heel world champion to be the guy that gets people ready to face off against the heel world champion. Uh, they don't have the belt, but especially Kenny Omega. Like, this is a perfect example to me of these people that have followed him over the years in Japan and other places that think he's his big mega star. Again, just like the Bucks. He's a star in isolated pockets, not to the larger masses of wrestling. They're not. And you see some acts that really come across well on TV. Kenny Omega hasn't been one of them. Like, it's been really underwhelming, really disappointing. Like, now being able to see him more and more, whereas always I would see a pay-per-view match here, a pay-per-view match there, now I'm getting more exposure to him, and I really look at him, and you can blame booking, and you can blame this, but ultimately, who's one of the assholes in charge of booking? He is! He's an EVP, you don't think he's helping put together the damn show? Like this, whatever they're doing, this, this ain't working and needs to shake up and needs to change. There's nothing interesting about this guy. It's not translating well. Doesn't mean he sucks. It just means it's not working. Time to go back to the drawing board a little bit. He had the MJF versus Hangman Page match to battle for that diamond ring. You know, the more interesting thing about this was after the match, with the face-off between MJF and DDP and Wardlow. Like, that was interesting. The match between MJF and Hangman Page, I don't remember. You, you get what I'm saying here? How often do you actually really remember these matches? You remember characters. You remember stories. You remember moments. You remember things that feel big. DDP trash-talking MJF and Wardlow feels like a big deal. MJF wrestling Hangman Page after the Battle Royal thing last week for a freaking ring doesn't feel like a damn big thing at all. Especially if it was just on a random episode of Dynamite. you got a, this whole thing with the elite and the inner circle, like... This is when you start to get that feeling that this is just friends running amok and booking their own crap and they want to make sure they get all their own stuff in. Like, maybe you think this is cool. I don't know, but goddamn, son. Like, if it isn't registering, it's not registering. And right now, it's not registering. And to those fans that are going to sit there and make the excuses of, oh, they won the demo. Well, you know what? You're going to go too much farther, and literally the only viewers you're going to have are in that demo, and it's not going to be very many, and that's going to be a really, really bad day. On top of that, don't hit me with that holiday crap. Don't hit me. Don't you dare hit me with that. Well, since they still are younger, people are off traveling to their families. Oh, fuck you. Because if anything, the Wednesday night before Thanksgiving, people, and especially, let's say, an 18 to 34 demographic in a lot of cases... Or they're going to be in school or out of school, so they've already traveled back home. Or 
even if they're at school or not in school, chances are they've got a crappy job that they just got off of work on Wednesday with, and they may have to go back to work Thursday and or Friday. So again, that excuse doesn't really fly. If you want to say a slight drop in viewership, so be it. A couple hundred thousand people, eh, eh, not buying it. Especially when you consider this show has lost, what, in two months? 800,000 viewers, more of half of the damn audience from the first show? Ding dong, dung dicks, we've got problems here. Major problems. Your main event of Scorpio Sky and Chris Jericho. To me, I was like, man, this is a chance to actually make somebody in Scorpio Sky. Not in terms of having them win the match. There was no way that was going to happen. But in the way you present this, in the way you get this across, like I felt like this could have really been a big kind of breakout moment for him. And it wasn't. It was just a title match on TV that just felt like we're flipping around and wasting time until we get to the thing that we really care about, which is Moxley coming down through the crowd to stare down Jericho at the end of the night. Well, if that was the case, you might as well not even have the damn match save everybody 15 minutes and just have walk, Moxley walk out for the damn begin with. this week. Let's see here. Luchasaurus, viewership higher. No Luchasaurus, viewership lower. And I'll even go so far as to say this. That a few weeks ago I saw a lot of people talking about how Marco Stunt was one of the highest rated segments on the show. Well, if that is the case, especially when you were building a brand, tis better to generate some type of heat and attention than none at all. Like this show, for example. If Marco Stunt is truly drawing that many additional eyeballs and generating that much additional buzz, which, at least from the buzz standpoint on the interwebs and social media a few weeks ago, he certainly did, then find a way to put it on the damn show every week. Find a way to put the Luchasaurus on the damn show every week. What we don't need is random women's tag matches. The best friends versus the Lucha Brothers. It is a crap. If I want to see a show filled with matches that have no consequence meeting, with no characters, no storytelling, no emotional investment, i just stick to watching WWE. The point of having an alternative brand is to be an alternative. Not a re-re version of the same crap. This show sucked this week. That's why OTRS Central is not the wrestling show you want. Not the rest. It's the wrestling show you need because I can't even get my buzzword right. Fucking A. You need somebody to tell you the truth about this crap. Stop listening to freaking In the Dumps Dave and freaking In the Bag Brian Alvarez about this crap. Because all they're going to do with their biased asses, clearly in the tank for these guys, is lead this product straight down the crapper. And then what's going to be the excuse? I remember years ago, you saw Bash all over TNA when TNA was at least drawing a million plus viewers and their show actually completely, totally sucked. And they were still generating higher viewership levels than what the hell you're getting here with AEW. So who's the clowns here? Who are the idiots here? Who are the marks here? Needs to be better. No excuses. Just do better.